right, well, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alicia Cordes Mayo, Communications Director at DEED. Great to have all of you with us today. Uh, we have Kevin McKinnon, our commissioner. This will be his last press conference on the jobs numbers as we have a new commissioner joining us shortly. So we're thrilled to have him here today. I just a couple of housekeeping items. Please do keep your devices muted. It helps mitigate echoes. And then many of you know the drill. You can drop questions in chat for later, or you can raise the use the raise hand function, and we'll get to those at the end. But otherwise, we'll get started today. Commissioner McKinnon, over to you. Well, thanks, Alicia, and thanks uh, to all of you for being with us today for a look at our May employment data. The big takeaways, uh, Minnesota employers added uh, 7,700 jobs last month, and our labor force grew by 8,700 people. That's the fastest labor force participation increase since January of 2022. This is uh, just uh, Minnesota's latest good jobs report. We continue to see steady growth in employment. It's one of the many indicators showing uh, the continued strength of the economy. Here's a quick look at the highlights from the employment numbers being released today. With more Minnesotans looking for work, our unemployment rate in May increased 0.1% to 2.9%. That increase in the number of people in the labor force bumped the state's labor force participation rate up a tenth of a percentage point to 68.2% over the month. Nationally, the unemployment rate ticked down one tenth of a percent to 3.7% uh, in May and U.S. labor force participation rate remained at 62.6%. The Minnesota job market continues to outpace the United States as a whole. Minnesota gained 7,700 jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis, up 0.3% from April to May. The private sector gained 6,300 jobs, up 2.2%, and that mirrors U.S. job growth. U.S. employment increased by 339,000 jobs, or up 0.2% April to May. The U.S. private sector gained 283,000 jobs, also up 0.2%. And the good news is that Minnesota's labor force grew a lot last month, up 8,700 people over the month. In the last two months, we've added over 12,000 workers to the labor market. The labor force is still, however, uh, over 32,000 people smaller than in February of 2020, when our labor force participation rate was uh, closer to 70% at 69.9%. Now I'd like to uh, pass this over to our Labor Market Information Office Director, Angelina Wynn, for a deeper dive on the details. Angelina. Thank you, Commissioner. So May job growth happened in six super sectors. Uh, professional and business services gained 2,900 jobs, or 0.7%. Uh, growth was concentrated in administrative and support services sector, uh, while the professional, scientific, and technical services sector lost a little bit of jobs. Uh, leisure and hospitality gained 2,300 jobs, or 0.8% growth, and this growth was entirely in accommodation and food services sector. Educational and health services gained 1,900 jobs, or 0.3%. Government gained 1,400 jobs, 0.3% uh, growth as well, with the strongest growth being in local government sector. And construction gained 1,000 jobs, or 0.7%. Other services gained 100 jobs, or 0.1%. Uh, manufacturing did not change over the month and is still at uh, 326,000 jobs. Four super sectors lost jobs um, over the month, and they are uh, trade, transportation, and utilities. They lost 1,100 jobs, uh, which is a 0.2% decrease um, due to losses in retail trade and wholesale trade, um, even though transportation, warehousing, and utility sector uh, had growth. Um, information lost 400 jobs, uh, down 0.9%. Mining and logging lost 200 jobs, uh, down 3% and financial activities lost 200 jobs, down 0.1% due to um, losses in the real estate and rental and leasing sector. So overall, the gains were larger than the losses um, for May. So we had uh, net growth, and uh, April job growth was revised downward by 200 jobs, which is less than 0.01% uh, change. Um, so the final estimate for um, the previous month, uh, April, is uh, that Minnesota gained 4,300 jobs total. 
Next slide, please. Our labor force size grew nicely over the month. Um, it's the biggest over the month increase in a long time since June uh, 2020. So as of May, it is at 3.096 million people. Uh, the number of employed increased by 7,218 people, and the number of unemployed increased by 1,482 people. Um, labor force participation rate inched up 0.1% um, to 68.2%, uh, and it's been hovering around 68% for a while. Um, it still is higher than the U.S. rate by almost 6%, um, but lower than our own pre-pandemic rate um, of almost 70%. Next slide, please. Now we look at over the year employment change by super sector. So over the year, Minnesota gained uh, a little more than 56,000 jobs. Uh, at the, that's a 1.9% growth. The private sector gained more than 46,000 jobs, which is up 1.8%. Um, in comparison, the U.S. grew 2.6% over the year. Um, the U.S. private sector grew 2.7% over the year. So all but two super sectors um, in Minnesota had positive annual growth. So leisure and hospitality continue to post the largest growth uh, of all the super sectors, up more than 19,000 jobs over the year. Uh, and again, Minnesota outpaced the national rate. So ours was 7.3% uh, growth, but whereas the U.S. was 5.4% growth for leisure and hospitality. And all subsectors under this uh, super sector saw growth, including full service restaurants. Um, education and health services continue to be the second largest over the year growth uh, super sector, up by almost 17,500 jobs or a 3.2% growth rate, and all subsectors uh, posted solid job growth. Uh, government grew more than 10,000 jobs or 2.4% growth, um, and all subsectors also saw positive growth except for state government education. Um, construction had 1.1% growth, which is um, almost 1,600 jobs. Um, the strongest growth happened in heavy and civil engineering construction, um, despite a dip in residential building construction. And for Minnesota, two super sectors had negative growth over the year, and they are mining and logging um, and financial activities. Um, the biggest decline um, in uh, under financial activities was in credit intermediation and related activities. Next slide, please. Uh, average hourly wages for all private sector workers decreased by 89 cents over the month to uh, $34.99. Um, but over the year, we saw wage growth um, increased by 68 cents, so it's a 2% growth. Um, inflation rate, uh, as you all know, is slowing down with each uh, month, um, and so is wage growth in most sectors. Um, some sectors maintain high wage growth that was uh, commonly seen last year. Uh, some examples are manufacturing, finance and insurance, nursing and residential care facilities. Um, some sectors saw negative wage growth uh, for production workers, like uh, in retail, um, ambulatory health care, transportation and warehouse. Uh, nationally, the private sector wages decreased 29 cents over the month, but over the year it grew 3.6%. And that is all for me. Alicia, back to you. Great. Thanks, Angelina. So we welcome questions. Uh, Brian, you've got your hand up already. Over to you. Good morning. Hi there, uh, Commissioner Angelina. Do you? Uh, at this on the number of jobs needed to get back to the level pre-pandemic do you anticipate that that will come that all those get, jobs will be gained back and under what conditions or or timeline is it looking like so the our labor force right now is about 32,000 people less than what it was uh, right before the pandemic, like the commissioner had mentioned. And that's really because our, our population is, is an older population. We saw a lot of retirements um, during the pandemic. Um, so in the you know recent months at this, uh, if this growth that we're seeing continues, then we should eventually get back to um, how it was pre-pandemic. But it's really hard to say like when that would happen. Thanks, Angelina. Kavita, over to you. Good morning. 
Good morning. Um, I was wondering if you can say anything about um, who you think may be returning to the labor force or um, who what, what some of the factors might be um, driving the higher uh, people returning to the labor force. That is a great question. Um, we we are not sure. Um, I, I, I yeah, I don't have a, a firm answer for that. Um, if any of my colleagues uh, want to speak to that or, or add anything. Well, hi, this is Oriane Cassell, Assistant Director. Um, uh, we are seeing um, labor force growth in um, Black and Hispanic populations. Um, and we're seeing continued de declines in the white population, and that's because of the aging of the aging workforce in that population. Um, so, so we're definitely seeing, you know, we're seeing overall growth, but it's really being driven um, as far as we can see in the numbers. We we can't see other populations, um, but it's being driven by Black and Hispanic um, labor force growth right now. You're certainly welcome to put questions in in the chat box or just use the raise hand function. Uh, hi, this is Tom Hauser from KSTP. Can you hear me? We can. Thanks, Tom. Uh, a quick question. Given our, our low unemployment, do you foresee, uh, and, and maybe you addressed this at the very top, I, I joined a few minutes late, do you foresee it being difficult for uh, state government and private industry to fill all the jobs that are going to be available. I know in state government, probably a thousand plus jobs are are being created by the new budget, and then you've got private uh, enterprise trying to raise uh, hire people as well. Do you foresee some challenges in that area given the state of the uh, employment landscape? So we do have a tight labor market in Minnesota right now. Um, the latest JOLT number um, shows that we have, um, for, for every job opening, there's um, uh, only 0.5 um, employees looking for work. Um, so Kevin, I will let you answer the rest of that question. Yeah, thanks Angelina. And, and I would say um, uh, clearly uh, we need more people uh, in the workforce, uh, and uh, we are working as uh, diligently as we can to uh, facilitate that. Uh, yes, getting our uh, uh, labor force participation rate back up uh, would certainly help, uh, but longer term, uh, I think uh, it's also clear that our labor force size has to grow, which means uh, we continue to need people uh, moving here uh, and and joining the labor force. So uh, this is an area where uh, I think it's very clear that the legislature uh, invested heavily in, uh, particularly to get people who are on the sidelines here in Minnesota. Uh, back in the workforce, uh, but also uh, uh, as well to um, uh, help facilitate uh, more residents here in Minnesota. So we're looking forward to, to implementing a lot of that here uh, come July 1st. And Kevin, if I can if I can ask a follow up, uh, I hosted a forum with some state lawmakers yesterday and they were talking about how there's going to be a lot of competition between uh, uh, private industry and state government in trying to hire some of the, the the same workers for for various jobs. Do you see this becoming a very competitive job market that might actually be good for people who do want to enter the workforce in terms of their pay and benefits? Yeah, I I think this is uh, a, uh, obviously a good time uh, to uh, be looking for work. Um, I think you've seen various articles of. Uh, some of the items that um, uh, the private sector is doing to obviously attract uh, people. I know the state enterprise is working uh, uh, hard on that as well um, across uh, all agencies. Uh, and uh, and so, as I mentioned, I think it, it is a it is a very good time, obviously, to be looking for work. Uh, in Minnesota, and we would welcome uh, those people to be uh, joining the labor force. Thank you. Kavita, back to you. 
Um, yeah, I guess uh, two things. Um, first, um, if you have any update on what you're seeing in terms of trends with unemployment um, claims, if uh, you're seeing any increase there. And uh, second, I was just going to point out that like you are all we are also seeing some slowdown in wage growth. And I was just uh, wondering if you guys could elaborate a little bit more about what you think might be happening there. So for UI claims, um, we are seeing a little, a little uptick in uh, weekly um, claims compared to the, the previous year. Um, and this is due to a uh, recent law change uh, for UI that includes um, uh, some educational uh, employees that weren't um, eligible for UI before that are now eligible. So um, it's not it's not a bad sign. It doesn't mean that we uh, have uh, more on, you know, it doesn't mean that our unemployment rate is higher. Um, it's just a, a legal change. And then um, your second question about wage growth. Um, yes, wage growth is definitely slowing down. Um, it makes sense from an economic uh, perspective in that uh, employers uh, cannot keep up with high wage growth that we've seen last year um, and, and um, earlier this year. Uh, it, not all sectors can keep that up um, for a long time. And for the sectors that um, have been able to gain people back, like to to get people uh, in positions that they're hiring for. Um, they they no longer need to raise wages to attract workers. Um, but other sectors, like uh, as we have seen, like a nursing resi residential care facility, um, is still seeing strong wage growth um, as they need to um, attract talent. And Kavita, I want to go back to your previous question about um, our labor force growth and who uh, we're seeing coming back uh, into the labor force. So in addition to um, what Orion said for um, Hispanics and black workers, uh, and thank you to my uh, colleague Cameron for looking up the data here, um, we also noticed that the female labor force participation rate ticked up a little bit this month. So from 63.5% uh, to 63.8%. Um, and the teen labor force participation rate is also uh, growing from 56% to, um, or sorry, from uh, a little under 55% to 56%. And usually it, um, it goes up in the summer. So for summer months, we would expect to see more teens in the labor force. Great, thank you. Any additional questions today? Great. Well, I am going to put my email address um, in the chat there. You're always welcome to reach out to me or my team at Deed uh, with any follow up questions. Happy to try to track down additional information if you need that. And otherwise, I'll turn it over to Commissioner McKinnon for a wrap up. Well, again, thank you, uh, Alicia. Thank you, Angelina and uh, Orion. Uh, and certainly to all of the media who uh, participated this morning. Indicators are very positive right now, uh, steadily adding uh, new jobs month over month, labor force growing by 7,700 uh, workers. I think every one of those makes a difference in a tight labor market. Um, along with uh, wages continuing to grow, inflation slowing uh, down, uh, exports continue to be up year over year, uh, and we continue to work to bring more people off the sidelines. Uh, we're looking forward to um, uh, continuing to monitor this and report back to you in the coming months. So appreciate your participation here uh, this morning, and thank you all. Bye-bye.